All right, in this video, let's learn about another technique to optimize the rendering behavior when dealing with parent and child components. And that technique is using React Memo. We'll see what it does in a minute, but first let's set up the components for this example. In the optimization folder, I'm going to create two new files. parent2.js and child2.js. To speed things up, I'm going to copy the code from parent1 into parent2 and from child1 into child2. Now let's make the modifications. First, I'm going to change child1 to child2. Then in the parent component, change all occurrences of parent1 to parent2. I'm also going to remove the children props and in the JSX include child2 component. Make sure to import it at the top. So those are the changes. Now for some additions. To be able to understand React Memo, we need one more state variable in the parent component. So in parent2.js, create a state variable called name and initialize it to Vishwas. Next, in the JSX, I'm going to add a button to simply change the name from Vishwas to Code Evolution. So button that says change name and on click, we're going to call set name, passing in the string Code Evolution. The name state will also be passed into the child2 component as a prop. So name is equal to name. All right, we now have our components set up. Let's include parent2 in app.js. Head to the browser and understand the rendering behavior. On page load, you can see the log messages for the initial render parent2 render and child2 render. Now I'm going to clear the console and click on the change name button. This updates the state in the parent component. The state is passed in as a prop to the child component. Both the components have to re-render and hence we see both the log messages in the console. Now before we proceed, just one small detail that I want to highlight. Often we are used to saying that the child component re-rendered because of change in props, like in this instance. But the fact is the child component re-rendered because the parent component re-rendered, not because the props changed. Think about it. If you remove the name prop, the child component still re-renders when the name state changes in the parent component. React does not care whether props changed. It will always render child components just because the parent rendered. Nothing to worry much about, but it was just something that I wanted to highlight. Now back to our parent and child. So we have just seen that both the components re-rendered and it makes perfect sense because the child component has to update the UI based on the new props received. Now let's take a look at the first button which increments the count value. I'm going to click the button and again we see both the log statements. The parent re-rendered and so did the child. This time however, it is evident that we have an unnecessary render. The count state variable does not affect the child component in any way. 
So if we change the count state, React should not re-render the child component. By that, I mean React shouldn't have to go through the render phase and then discard the render output. As we have learned, unnecessary renders do affect performance. To optimize this rendering behavior, we can let React know that it should re-render the child component only if its props change. And the way to do it is using react.memo. React.memo is a higher order component which you can use to wrap components if they render the same result given the same props. Doing so will give you a performance boost in some cases by memoizing the render output. So if your component props don't change between renders, React will skip rendering the component and reuse the last rendered result. In our case, React will skip rendering the child component and reuse the render output from the previous render. So in the child2 component, all we have to do is add an additional export. Export const memoized child2 and this is going to be equal to react.memo and we pass in the child2 component which is the component defined above. Back in parent2 component, I'm going to replace child2 with memoized child2 in the JSX as well. Let's save the files and head to the browser to test this out. On page load, we have the two log messages from the initial render. Clear the console, click on change name, and both the components render as expected. Clear the console again, and now I click on the count button, and you can see that only the parent component renders. The child component does not render because React is using the memoized result since the child component props never changed. Now one point to keep in mind is that memo only does a shallow comparison of the previous and new props. However, you can pass in a custom comparison function as the second argument to react.memo to meet your requirements. With that, let me quickly summarize what we've learned in this video. In React, when a parent component renders, a child component might unnecessarily render. To optimize this behavior, you can use react.memo and pass in the child component. React.memo will perform a shallow comparison of the previous and new props and re-render the child component only if the props have changed, thus providing a performance boost in some scenarios. So that is about React Memo. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.